Welcome to a new video on my channel and this is going to be a short video just to give you an update on a project that I'm working on and this is something that I wanted to do for uh, I don't know how many years since I've seen the first word colloc and that was obviously in English and um, you know it was nice and I thought mm, maybe I can do the same in Hungarian but I wasn't sure if I would be able to fit in like, in a 10 by 10 matrix most pro mostly because well, the Hungarian words tend to be much longer than English words. But then I actually started, you know, making some mockups in Excel and I managed to do that. And that's how it looks like at the moment. There has been so many design iterations on this because you probably have seen some of my projects where I'm using NeoPixel um, matrices to drive displays. But the ones that I was able to find are not in a rectangular form and they are also quite expensive. So I was uh, looking online and I've also found a couple of projects which are using these PX matrix boards uh, that are actually cheaper than uh, the NeoPixel ones. And um, this comes in these modules. So it's basically like, you know, a bunch of shift regis registers and it's already in a, in a mounted in a rigid case. And they usually have the same I think it's two by eight pin connectors. They're usually called Hub 75. And they come in different shapes and sizes. And this is the biggest one I was able to find. So this is 32 by 32 pixels and 192 by 192 millimeters. And it, originally I wanted my word clock to be even bigger. Like each of these letters would be like maybe four by four centimeters or five by five. So probably like four times as big so I can mount it on a wall and it can be visible and easily read from a distance. And for that I actually bought 100 NeoPixel LEDs separate in a small PCB and I thought I would just make a big box, but then it just seemed, you know, so complicated and I thought that could be a better way and that's why I came to this NeoPixel ones. And I decided upon this model and it's called a P7 in AliExpress and this thing cost, I think it was about 20 US and uh, I think that's quite cheap considering that it's a fairly, you know, rigid construction, the whole thing. And this is actually outdoor rated, not that I'm going to be using it outdoor. So there is a big conformal coating on the, um, on the PCB. The idea here is now, because I need, I have 10 by 10 letters. So what I thought is that each letter is going to be three by three. So I would use the inner 30 by 30 grid and then basically just the outer LEDs are going to be left unused. So I got the, uh, the PCB, I got the code running. It is running mostly already. I mean, I, I consider the code pretty much complete, but what I have done, I've also created a PCB for that. So that's the, uh, probably one of the main purpose of this video. And I just received this from PCBWay uh, just yesterday. So uh, I think PCBWay is the sponsor of this video. And it is very simple, so you have one connector uh, for the, uh, the P in, I think, P, uh, sorry, PI connector. And that's the connector, which is, you have to hold it like this. So the arrows go from left to right. So that's the PI or P in, and that's the P out or sorry, the PO or the P out connector. So you have the P in connector here and the P out connector. You have a, a VMOS D1 mini and a power jack or power connector and an LDR so I would be able to control the brightness based on what the ambient light is and I have two more connectors because as it turns out these uh, modules they have uh, you know various pins in here and there are a couple of um, um, to be honest, I haven't really gone into the details how this works, but there are some uh, red, green and blue, so R1, B1, R2, B2 connectors, and there are some other data connectors like A, B, C, D, E, and then based on what sort of model you have, and there are different scan lines and that sort of stuff. Sometimes you use all A, B, C, D, E, uh, or sometimes you just use A, B, C, D connectors. And then the, the unused connectors needs to be connected to ground. So what I have done is I've <coughs> broken out the E and the D connectors here. And based on what model you have, you can either put the jumper on the right side so that connects the data lines uh, or to the 
uh, VMOS pins or you put them on the left side so that it connects them to ground. Uh, so if I would be doing any projects in the future, I should be able to use this uh, very same PCB for a dis different type of P board. So for example, if I have a, a 64 by 32, that might use the E data pin as well. So you can, I can use the same one and I can just move the jumpers because the rest of the wiring is the same. So that's the, that's the PCB. I'm still testing, it so far looks good. Um, and once the whole project is finished, then I'm just going to have a, another video and put everything on GitHub and uh, you should be able to download or order your own PCB. In the meantime, I'm also doing some 3D printed parts. So this is going to be a mask which goes in something like this. So this creates the, um, I think it goes in like this or maybe the other way around. <coughs> So this creates the 3x3 three three grid for each of the letters and there uh, those indents on the 3D printed part matches the, the grooves here on the, on the panel and I also have these corner pieces which go something like here and I need a few other pieces to be printed so I can have another piece here so the whole thing can be bolted together and of course the idea is that I will put tracing paper here so that diffuses the light so don't, you don't see the individual LEDs and eventually I would have another plate in here um, out of uh, maybe wood or maybe um, laser cut uh, metal which has the, uh, the letters cut out so then the, LED, the LEDs can shine through from the, from the underside. Well, at least that's the idea. If I get there at some point. By the way, when you buy these, you're also getting a ribbon cable. So if you would have multiple of these, you can just connect them, you know, P in to the P out of the previous board and the P out to the P in of the next board. And these uh, are keyed. So you can see the key here and the recess there and you're also getting a power cable and I've already cut this one half so you can see how I'm using it because there is a separate power connector so if all the LEDs are lit in this one a full brightness and all of them are white and I think this panel itself can probably draw about I don't know five four or five amps maybe you know at uh, five volts so that's a lot of amps that's why the the, you know, the multiple connectors for ground and VCC. But because of this particular one, I'm not going to drive most of the LEDs at the same time. So even though the, um, the brightness is turned all the way down, it is not drawing more than, let me see, 180 milliamps. So I think even if it's uh, at full brightness, it's not going to uh, draw more than one and a half amps. So this can easily drive from a, uh, well, a, a beefier USB power supply. So I'm not planning to have a separate uh, uh, five volt power supply for this one. I was talking about all the different, um, you know, the hardware and then the design and everything. But what the code does is obviously it shows the time and uh, there are no buttons on this one. So the ESP connects to the NTP server. It gets the internet time. Then it fixes it by your local time zone and even the daylight saving time and actually checks the NTP time every hour uh, just to make sure that the you know the the time on the ESP doesn't drift from the internet time and then it updates the screen based on what the current time is and as you can see uh, this is all in Hungarian but I designed the code that for you know every hour and for every five minute because the the text changes every five minutes it actually stores which um, pixels or in this case which group of pixels needs to be lit so if you want this in a different language assuming that it also fits in a 10 by 10 grid then you can just redefine those numbers or just change those numbers and then it will you know lit a different set of pixels uh, which correspond to the you know different letters in, in your language so I think it could be quite easily adapted uh, to other languages with a few other modifications the other features of this device is that 
Um, probably you have seen in the video that every minute it just goes into like a random animation. It picks a random color and it just lights up a few LEDs and then, and then it goes back to the clock face sort of just to give uh, some sort of motion because otherwise obviously the screen doesn't change for five minutes uh, because I don't have enough words to describe every single minute of the, you know, every single hour. And that's it. Oh yeah, the other nice feature which I definitely wanted to include is also that the display somehow mimics the, the daylight. So at the moment it is, it says 10 minutes to 2 and it's in the afternoon, so it's daylight. So the pixels, I mean you can see some colors, because, but that's just a different RGB LEDs, um, how they make up the, the light. But it is supposed to be white, well it is white. And when the sun starts to go down, then this light starts to uh, uh, fade into red and then and it fades into blue. So I have different colors for sunset, sunrise, uh, daytime and nighttime. And those colors automatically fade into each other based on what the, um, you know, the current uh, sunrise and sunset time is. So again, that's uh, automatically determined based on your location, which is stored in the code. So it follows the uh, sunset and su uh, sunrise of every single day. But that's pretty much it. Other than that, it's just a clock. Um, okay, it has a few, one more feature which I include in most of my displays. It also connects to MQTT server and I do have a separate topic that I usually uh, set a message to whenever I go to sleep because then I just turn the display off on, well, on this unit and some of my other display units as well. So I just don't want them to to be lit um, sort of 24-7 when I'm, I'm sleeping anyway. And if I flip this around, then you can see the PCB. And as I said, there is the power cable, which basically just loops through. And then the five volts on the ground is connected to the five volts on the ground of the ESP. So at the moment it is running from the USB port, but if you would want to use the same setup for a different uh, purpose where you would have, you need more amps for the display, then you can have a more beefier power supply and then feed it directly here with five volts and ground and that would also power the ESP. And as I said, these are the jumpers for the E and the D data terminals, or sorry, data lines. So uh, for me, E is grounded and D is, is active and it's connected to one of the pins of the ESP. And that's the P-in connector, so it's facing down, and that's basically just holding the PCB in place. And I haven't used any special connectors, so as I said, this one is keyed, but I just use a one by eight, um, what is it, female header, and I just have two next to each other. And that's the LDR, and that's the pull down resistor for the LDR, I haven't populated these. And the only other connection is the P-out, uh, connector, which again, um, that's the only thing I haven't paid attention to. If I have used a key socket, which is like this one, then it wouldn't fit between the power connector and this one. So, okay, so here I'm just using a two by eight uh, male pin header. And I just need to remember that the key part is this way, as you can see. And of course the other, the other side, well, that goes into the key socket, so you can't plug it any other way. So it's really neat. It has some width on the back, but um, I mean, you know, these connectors are beefy as well. I, if I really wanted to make a really slim design, I could have designed, well, actually you could use a 90 degree uh, header here. So it becomes a slightly slimmer. And also I have put the ESP module in a socket so you can directly solder that into the PCB. So the whole setup can be a little bit leaner and not to take up so much space. But I'm planning to add some 3D printed spacers here. So it's basically just um, like, I'm going if I'm going to hang the wall here, it's going to be something like this. So there's plenty of airflow, not that these are components are getting hot at all. And um, just have another panel here with the, you know, the letters probably with a, a big uh, bezel. So it's going to hide everything which is behind. But that's the idea, it's going to take some time, let's see how it goes. So as I said, if I follow my channel, I will post the final video when this is done. And of course that would include the GitHub to the code and also to the PCB and also the, the files for all the 3D printed parts 
once I manage to finalize that design. But that will be all for now. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.